Real people of diverse cultures using the power of their faith to ground their lives and spur them on to amazing heights. Welcome as we appreciate one of life's great portraits. The time-honored beautiful art of calligraphy, elegant handwriting painted in brush and ink, is a mainstay of numerous countries from England to China. Perhaps the art has never been more revered than it is by Islamic culture and one of its modern masters, Mohammed Zakaria. A practitioner of calligraphy for its divine meanings, Zakaria has used his skill to cross cultural barriers into the mainstream media while teaching the next generation of calligraphers the lessons behind the script. Tonight on Portraits, Mohammed Zakaria, a faithful artist. I was born in 1942, California, Southern California. Grew up regular kind of places, you know, Los Angeles area. I used to work in machine shops. Um, I was a machinist. Um, I was doing precision work, mostly for the aerospace industry. Uh, I did machine rehabilitation and other things of that kind, machine maintenance, uh, and tiny machining of, of highly precision parts. It was during this period that I began to get interested in calligraphy. I was uh, walking down after work one day down Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles, and there was this uh, Armenian guy who had a, a rug store. And, and it was awful of rugs, you know. And, and, and I looked in the window and I saw this thing on the wall. It was a thing like a, in a frame, you see, like a picture. And I, got, I was really interested. I turned around, I went inside, and I said, uh, what is that beautiful thing? And he says, oh, that's some kind of Muslim writing, kid, but it's really expensive. You can't afford it. And I said, well, if I can't afford it, you know, maybe I should try to make some. And uh, thanks to that guy, he got me started doing calligraphy because he, he, instead of selling it to me, he threw me out and made me, you know, kind of get into it. So I went down to the public library and I began to look at some of the books and saw different writing systems and things and uh, became aware that there was this tradition in Islam of uh, calligraphy and so forth. And so I uh, went and I cut some bamboos, you know, from the local park, you know, and, and, and tried to make pens. And I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, it was completely uh, guesswork. And so uh, basically I did so many wrong things, but I was able to get some, some effect, you know. And because of that, I ended up uh, getting deeper and deeper into the interest section of this thing, getting to like it and, 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 and to discover new things about it. One thing led to another, and before long, Zachariah's interest in Arabic calligraphy grew into a devout fascination. He traveled to Morocco to embrace the culture fully and to train in the writing with Abdul Salam Ali Noor, an Egyptian comedian who showed Zachariah how to produce the artwork without teaching him why. I felt that there was something lacking and I wasn't getting any progress. I wasn't able to, to, to go beyond the level I was in. I would see, for instance, I would see a, a photograph or a picture of a really great piece, and then I see, I try to copy, you know, uh, and I, I couldn't do it, you know. I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't do that. It was like there was a wall between me and accomplishing a better kind of work. Despite his shortcomings, Zakaria did make some headway in the field, gaining notoriety traveling the Muslim world in Egypt and Algeria. He was making a living doing what he loved, but he still found no love in what he was doing. At the urging of Essine Atil, 
curator of Islamic art at Washington, D.C.'s Freer Gallery, Zakaria would make the move that would finally set his course. He was advised to go back to Turkey and study for the coveted Ijazet, an advanced diploma in Arabic calligraphy and its history. The travel would prove quite an undertaking. Though a noble art, calligraphy is not a high-paying one. But Zakaria's mentor was undaunted. Young man, you have to go to Turkey, she said. And I said, yeah, but I, I, can, I gotta go to the moon too, you know, I mean, how am I gonna get to Turkey? She says, well, we'll find some way, you know. And so how we would do this is, is I was living over in a, in a section of uh, Istanbul called Laleri, and I would go to his place, which is in, in Kuru Çeşme in, in, in Üsküdar. He had a mosque up there. He was uh, called Salami Ali Jami, and he was uh, the imam with that mosque. And so I would, I would get up and walk across the city to the uh, ferry boat at Eminönü, and then take the ferry boat to Üsküdar, and then walk up the hill. It took like, you know, a couple of hours of walking, and I'd get up there, then we'd work, you know, for a couple of hours. Isn't that nice printing, for one thing? He would study under Turkey's most celebrated calligraphers, Hassan Çelebi and Ali Alparslan, at the Research Center for Islamic History, Art, and Culture in Istanbul. He learned the history of the writing and its connection to his faith, lessons he reinforces every day in his own teachings. The style I'm working on, and correct me, correct my pronunciation, mm -hmm. is Nesk. This is Nesk. Nesk is called Khadim al-Qur'an. It means it's like the servant of the Qur'an because most of the Qur'ans are written in, in Nesk. Most of the Hadith is written in it. It's your basic script. Uh, if I could reach it, I could show you when, any one of those that are written like that. Uh, it's very practical. It's, it's a good size. It is very legible, but, and also it's extremely difficult. Dan is interested in, in, in text and meanings, and sometimes some of the scripts, they're not so good for meanings because they're, they, the meanings hide in their complexities. And so when you want to have something really nice and plain and simple and beautiful, Nesk, in my opinion, is the most beautiful of them all. In the philosophy of the thing, the line should flow out of the pen just like breath comes out of the body. It should just be like, like that. It should come out and it has to express that flow by its look. He carves many of his pens, each from a different wood, each with a story of its own. A pen, in this case a bamboo one, this one would make a big, wide stripe, but it has two corners, this corner, this corner, two sides. And so when you make a line with it, it's making a line with two different sides. And of course, it's filled in between. And by the angle that you hold it, it is capable of doing, uh, you know, thicks and thins and things like that. Now, if you just fool around with this thing and make your thicks and thins, it doesn't have any value at all. It, it's, not, it's not accomplishing anything. But if you work with a set of proportions and rules that have been refined, really, uh, in some cases, over like uh, 12, 13 centuries, you're working with a very finely tuned, uh, not just a finely tuned tool, but a finely tool tuned system of writing because you have the pen, you have the special ink, you have the special paper, you have your text, um, you have to have the right mood in a sense. They say, for instance, you should never be distracted or you shouldn't be too thinking you're too happy or too sad, you know, things of that kind. Um, hello? Uh, hello? Yes, huh? Oh, hi, fine. You just have to go through those lessons, and you and you have to go through the whole process. There's, there's no escape from it. I have students that come to me, but isn't there a shortcut? You know, isn't there a, a way I can cut out all the 
the repetitions and the so forth. And I say, uh-uh, you know, if you want to have, if you want to have it, you're going to have to take the, uh, the long route, you know. The, uh, they say if you want to play the tune, you've got to learn the music first, you know. Wow. Not only that, you're getting style now. <laughs> you see? That's right. You're getting a style. Mashallah. Yeah. I just passed my my third lesson, so but the hardest letter was the ba. And I think a lot of it's all connected to like I was really stressed out last year, I had a long year. And um I think it showed in my calligraphy. And then when sort of like the burden eased my calligraphy sort of took off. So basically since I was uh, I'm a painting concentration and I also fell into Arabic somehow and so I felt that the only cross section between my two fields of interest in the emerging calligraphy. So that's how naturally it seemed like a good idea to look into. Young people get involved in this and, and they uh, they find for instance a system of honor, you know, how to behave in an honorable way uh, so that uh, people will uh, respect you. And, and this is this is extremely positive, you know. Uh, it gives people a lot of a lot of ability to endure difficulty. It gives them a lot of um, uh, uh, humility towards other people. It, it, it makes them sympathetic to other people's difficulties. Um, but it opens their mind also to this world of beauty, which they have all around them, but they can't understand it yet. And so when they take the lessons, they get into it and they do lessons and lectures and things like that, people begin to understand how these, uh, how this world of beauty actually operates. I have uh, to find you a bigger jar, I think, okay. for the ink. Okay. So we can, this is nice, but it's, at some point, you know, you want to have a little bigger one. I like the art and also, um, I feel like it makes me closer to what I am, you know, and who I am. My, uh, my initial um, interest in it deals with the aesthetics, just how beautiful it is and how compelling it is, how it, how it calls you or calls to you, um, even though you don't necessarily understand it. It was very tough at first. The original, the first lessons were very difficult. I didn't have any understanding of of, of it, but they showed me how to deal with it, and I began to make progress. And eventually, I went back to the States, and we pursued it really through the mail. I would write a, a lesson uh, almost every week. I have a stack of these things like this high, and I'd send it, and then they would send theirs back to me, and um, it worked very nicely. And after four years, I was able to get my jazit from Chalabi. I went over and we had a ceremony in the uh, Yildiz Palace. Uh, I was the first one to get a, a, an ijazah through that uh, program. And then uh, again, I went over again. Uh, I started going over there pretty regularly after that, but I went in, in, in 97 and got my second ijazah from Dr. Alparslan, who, who now is uh, deceased. The, 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 he was the last of the really uh, old generation that was doing calligraphy. And a very great and uh, uh, what would you call him, uh, ethical person. You know? I teach Nasi Sulus, Talik, and uh, Rika. Uh, in the Talik script, it looks more like this. Let's see if I do it like that. You see, it's a much more open script. Four lines to a page. Link. These are very beautiful ones done by Hulusi Effendi. Although my own teacher was Ali Alparslan and he had studied with Nedjbedin Effendi, who, who was, in my opinion, even greater than Hulusi Effendi. This reverence to writers of days gone by flows easily from Zachariah. He's one of the foremost historians of the Ottoman Empire from where many of today's scripting styles developed. He respects the art for its place in defining his Islamic faith, 
and looks to share this with his students. In Suleiman Kanuni's time, which is, you know, the 1500s, Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, you know, uh, he was like a very famous poet, Mehmed Haqqani. And so uh, he wrote that book, called, and they called it Hidye Haqqani, or, or Haqqani's Hidye of the Prophet. You know, it's very beautiful. Bismillah idilim fatih kalam. Let us begin this, the talk about with the Bismillah. Fat ola tabu muhammai benam. This uh, should begin with this ancient mystery. It says, "Ol masa bismillah resmi mamdud jinsi ashada ulur muidum vujud." It's um, if the Bismillah had not had this long and stretched out shape. Uh, it has something to do with the, the, the way the, the, the body uh, looks a little bit. Somebody uh, called me from the post office, or actually from a company that works with the post office, and they said, um, we have uh, some people in the post office are interested in talking with you. Would you like to talk to the people from the post office? And I said, what about? And they said, we really can't discuss it on the telephone. And I said, oh, okay, so come on. I said, come on over. And so they all came over, like five guys with suits, you know, and everything like that. I said, what is this, you know? And they came and sat down, and I said, so? And they said, uh, well, um, we have to talk about something, but it's confidential. You can't tell anybody what you're talking about. And would you like to sign a document about that? And I says, can you give me kind of a hint, you know? And so they said, well, it has to do with, with, with the post office. It has to do something with, 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 with uh, the process of making stamps or something like that. And I said, uh, you know, it really sounds kind of interesting. You know, I'm going to sign it and see what happens, you know? So I signed the document and says, okay, we want you to make a stamp. And I said, oh, you know, okay. Uh, what kind of stamp do you want? He says, well, there's been a whole lot of Muslim people saying we, everybody else has got a stamp, you know, the Christians, the Jews, the, 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 uh, the Buddhists, the Chinese, everybody has got a stamp, but the Muslims, so we, we would like you to make one. I says, well, you know, I'm a calligrapher, so that assumes you want one in calligraphy. And they said, uh, well, we'd like to try it. You know, if you make some sketches and we'll get some ideas for some other people, you know, and, uh, We'll put it all together and see what happens. Um, and I said, what's the chances of this being, you know, seriously taken? He said, well, it's a pretty good one because we asked around and the, and everybody said, you know, who who would you go to? And they all said, try Zachary. You no, know, he does calligraphy. You know, maybe he's the best one to have for it. So I began to work and I did a bunch of different versions and I used different texts. And I thought to myself, we ought to have a stamp that, that, that uh, since it's going to be for Ramadan, we should have uh, uh, something to do with the Eid, you know. The stamp sold and, and sold out. It, it completely sold out its first run, and then they went into a second run and reissued I think it's in its third reissue now. Um, pleasing Allah is my first goal, so. Um, well, you see, we can have it both ways. I know. Because, I mean, because uh, yeah. the Prophet, Ali Salatu Salam, says the best thing you can do to make a living is the Quran. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's not there's no there's no religious uh, no. problem with us making it's making nice. making money off of, off of it. Especially, you know, if we're reasonable people, you know, we're not looking to get rich. But at least, you know, we we, we it, you know, we can make it. But if we can, uh, it's great. If we can, so what? You know, it's <laughs> it's it's it allows us to, you know, they say that that, that power uh, Richness and power corrupts, but also poverty corrupts. Oh. It sure does. Maybe more even, because it affects more people. And so less people need to be poor. How are you today? Hi, He opens his home studio to his students, free of charge, to come and learn as he did. One lesson, one stroke, and one story at a time. It is the past continuing to echo in Zachariah's teachings. It's a very, it's a very deep bond between 
the past calligraphers and the present ones, you know. And we know that this process works. It, it produces the best calligraphers. And so it'll continue that way. And if somebody, for instance, when they break that rule and they start charging the money for it, then the quality of their writing goes all, it goes haywire. You, you lose it. When did you start? I think I started in April. In April, okay. Yeah. yeah. You started a little earlier than that, didn't you? Yeah. No? You started after. Oh, okay. It's very rare for any calligrapher in history to make a fortune. Um, some have done okay. It's, it's been largely what I would call a pretty decent middle class income. But it's not, th there have been a few who, who probably, you know, might be thought to have gotten rich, but uh, almost none. Uh, today, there's a few people who do pretty well. But, but most of them can't even survive. They have to do, you know, they have to have a day job, as we say, you know. Uh, I'm fortunate because I can uh, make enough to, to where it's my basic income. But uh, there are months when you don't make anything at all and months when you do, so. friend who, op who runs a gallery in San Francisco, his name is Suleiman Cook, and he's got a uh, gallery called Masterworks Institute for Works on Paper, and uh, I uh, let him handle my work out there on the West Coast and, and in many other places, and um, we had a big show there last year, and it was uh, fairly successful, and um, I'm doing an exhibition, a museum exhibition right now in Seattle that's going to open in September. Uh, at the Bellevue Arts Museum. And let's see, there's supposed to be one next year here in D.C., next year at the, at, um, I think at Catholic University or something like that. Just use uh, the forum for people to see your work and stuff like that, get familiar with it, and, and uh, it's part of promotion, and you get a chance to talk to people, do lectures and things like that. This is a Christian country, it's, it doesn't have any experience with this. And all the only thing it knows about Muslim people really is, is, is that, uh, well, right now they're very angry, you know, or that uh, um, uh, at one time they were pirates, you know, or at one time they were, you know, uh, running around fighting Europeans all the time, you know, and things like that. The, the picture is, 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 is a very uh, 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 distorted and, um, not particularly uh, attractive one, although it's very interesting for a lot of people. So, uh, one of the things I like to do is to explain to people, you know, like, um, all these pieces of calligraphy mean something. Each, each text is an, is an important meaning, you know. When we say, you know, for instance, Allahu Akbar, it doesn't just mean God is great, which it doesn't mean that at all. It is a whole world of meaning that goes around that or the Bismillah, or, or things like that. All these things have lots of, of sp specific and, and, and deep meanings that the people who understand these things are, are uh, you know, using their heads, you know, they're not using, uh, they're not just repeating, you know, silly formulas. And so I try to expose people to the fact that that layer uh, exists and that, and that um, not just for, for people who, who, who are, you know, Christians and Jewish people, but Muslims themselves over here tend to forget that sort of thing. You know, they, they, they get uh, so wrapped up in, in uh, the way of life that they tend to forget the meanings of these things that, they're, that, they're, that they think that they value. It, it, but how can you value them unless you understand them? So. Uh, uh, my hope is that at some point, you know, uh, through time, you know, Islam will become naturalized in the United States and, and probably in an American kind of way. Uh, it'll become normalized here. People won't think twice about it. If someone's a Muslim or somebody's not, uh, it's not going to raise any eyebrows, you know, and, and, and people will be able to function normally here. Do you have your pen? You have your ink? You have everything? 
Did you did you leave it in there? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I caught you. They always forget something. This is a piece from the Quran, and it means well, uh, is salatuli the Kari, where God says to Moses, actually, he is establish prayer in my memory, so to remember him through prayer. And that was one of the first of the Ten Commandments, I think, what it was. The diligence of Zachariah's craftsmanship reflects his adherence to Islamic culture, as well as his beliefs in the Muslim faith. He uses the skills of his former life as a machinist and woodcarver to create the instruments he uses to bring the ancient traditions of calligraphy to 21st century society. These traditions continue to flourish in his teachings, his students, and the lives they touch with each stroke of their graceful pens. Ordinary people making extraordinary contributions to the world, opening minds and touching hearts with their stories. Next time on Portraits.